Goodness gracious, those Kelly Greens looked absolutely incredible in person last night as Sean Desai, he put on a masterclass against Tua and the Dolphins. Eli Ricks, he might be the biggest steal of the entire offseason. And Jalen Hurts, he powered through the pain of a new injury. His teammates said it motivated them. We'll dive more into that. How about A.J. Brown last night? Continued his record-setting performance. He dominated the Dolphins. I'm Thomas Mott. This is The Thomas Mott Show. <laughs> All right, I just landed a couple of hours ago, back from Philadelphia, Sunday Night Football at the link. The energy was as close to a playoff game as I have ever seen. And the Kelly Greens last night, oh my goodness, it was absolutely a game for the ages. Not only was there Kelly Green all over the place in the Eagles parking lot at the tailgate that I was going to, shout out Lamb and Mike, but all the stars were there as well, including this picture of what, Julio Jones, Deshaun Jackson, Chad Ojosinko, Devontae Smith, A.J. Brown, Everybody was ready for a big night in Philadelphia. The light show kicked things off, which was honestly really awesome. And if you have not been to an Eagles night game this year so far, you got to check it out. Because the light show, pregame intros, the Kelly Greens coming onto the field for the very first time. Boy, it was loud. It was exciting. And it was one of the most fun games I've ever been to at Lincoln Financial Field. Side note, can we get a thousand likes for the Kelly Greens? You guys want these to be the permanent jerseys? Let me know down below in the comment section. But I thought just even as an alternate on camera, the Kelly Greens were incredible last night. Now, Brian Johnson got things started by establishing the run behind DeAndre Swift on the opening drive. And then Hurts connected with Dallas Goddard twice for two big gains. And the Eagles offense went straight into the red zone as they've done almost every single opening drive this year. But then in classic Brian Johnson, form he did a quarterback run a Kenny Gainwell red zone carry and then another quarterback run which obviously didn't work and Philadelphia's fantastic opening drive had to settle for a field goal Tua then found Tyreek on his opening drive but pressure on third down following one of many Dolphins penalties forced a very quick Finns punt also side note Jalen Carter he missed last week's game he was on a pitch count last night only came in on very clear passing downs this was his first play though of the entire night he was absolutely unguardable. I was watching him all night long. I think he probably won 90% of his snaps on defense against either one-on-one, -on -one, 2v1, or even 3v1 getting chipped at times. He is so clearly Defensive Rookie of the Year, and he showcased why last night. Philadelphia got the ball back, and Jalen Hurts immediately fumbled on this horrific play where it's kind of a covered sack. He holds onto the ball way too long. It gets easily knocked out, and Philadelphia continues their big, long streak of turning the football over one too many times each and every game. This one was a backbreaker, though, because it was deep inside Eagles territory. Tua then immediately threw a wide-open touchdown pass to Tyree Kill. The Dolphins held Josh Sweat so torn badly they had to call it back. The side's defense then settled down, out from the crowd noise, and forced a Dolphins field goal. Birds then went right back to work, and he marched back into Dolphins territory, where the Birds would go ahead and do their first of six brotherly shoves last night, all of which worked. That really pissed off Dolphins beat writer Joe Shad, who apparently was so upset last night, he took to Twitter and voiced his whole idea that the brotherly shove is the worst play of all time and got ripped for it as he should on Twitter. Hertz then found Goddard on a tight end screen, had Jordan Mailata like 20 yards in front of him blocking downfield. He cleared the way and the Birds had their very first touchdown jumping out to a 10-3 lead. I gotta at least give Brian Johnson some credit here. He wasn't perfect last night, but this was his best offensive game plan and the best overall night for the Eagles offense almost all season long. He got John Jerry Swift involved, he got A.J. Brown involved, Dallas Goddard was involved. They moved the ball around really, really well. And even though he will continue to be under a microscope the remainder of the year, this was a very promising night for me from Brian Johnson. What do you guys think? The Dolphins' next possession, they went three and out, and I started to really buy into this whole idea that Sean Desai was not only about to put on a clinic, but is perhaps one of the better defensive coordinators Philadelphia has had in a long time. I mean, this is a Dolphins team that was averaging 37 points per game on offense. This was the greatest show on grass, except for last night. On the next Eagles drive, Jalen Hurts scrambled for a first down, but Twitter noticed kind of a slight limp, a little gimp in his stride, which really hasn't been there all season long. Jalen would not lead the game, but he did put a brace on underneath his clothes after halftime. He was seen jogging really gingerly on the field after the game, into the tunnel after the game, and that pronounced limp had me worried and had a lot of people on Eagles Twitter being like, what the heck is going on? Now, when asked about it post-game, Jalen Hurts gave a classic Jalen Hurts answer and basically gave us no information. Did you end up putting a, a brace on Jalen during the game? I did. Is that anything you think that will affect you going forward? I hope not. 
Now, I kind of thought back to that Rams play I talked about where he really landed awkwardly here, but turns out it's the other knee, so it clearly didn't happen on this play, but Hurts did confirm the injury did not happen last night against the Dolphins, and Nick Sirianni and A.J. Brown, they both hinted in their post-game press conferences that Hurts was playing banged up, it had come from a previous football game, and he was not 100%. So it's hard for me to tell if this is like a major thing that they're trying to mask, or if it's a minor thing that Hurts is just playing through. Either way, A.J. Brown said it was very, very motivating to see his general out there playing through some pain. Uh, you know, when, you, when, you, when your general is, uh, is uh, fighting through stuff, you know, it gives you a little extra little hump, you know what I'm saying, to, 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 to fight through or to get it done. You know what I'm saying? He's standing tall in the pocket. He knows what he needs to do. Um, and uh, he's leading us. So, you know, whenever you see him fight through adversity, you know, it give us momentum. It give us energy. You know, we got we to gotta do it. You know what I'm saying? So, um, not to say nothing wrong, something wrong with him, but, you know, for him. Jalen is super tough, and he obviously hates talking to the media, so he's never going to tell you exactly what's going on. And Philadelphia will have to keep it close to the chest, that way other teams can't key on it. But I'm torn between this being kind of serious, and they're just working through it, or kind of a minor tweak that we're going to see Jalen have to deal with for the rest, next uh, couple of weeks until he's able to rehab. Either way, it definitely was concerning when QB1 was limping out there. How concerned were you guys? I know people on Twitter were saying Mariota was warming up at halftime, but Hurts never left and fought through the pain. I'm hoping QB1 is going to be just fine. A couple of plays later, Philadelphia went for on fourth down and three, and Jalen Hurts. How about Houdini on a bad leg, bad knee, whatever it is, rolling to his right, touchdown, well, almost touchdown pass to A.J. Brown. This was vintage Jalen Hurts keeping the eyes down the field and finding number 11 all the way down to the half-yard line. Stay tuned for way more on A.J. Brown's unbelievable record-setting night last night. But the Eagles had the ball at the one, and obviously Tush Push was coming. It's very funny to be in the stadium and have 70,000 of your closest friends all know what's coming, and the Dolphins still couldn't stop it. Tush Push for the touchdown. Philadelphia was starting to blow this game wide open. Now, Tua went back to work on a two-minute drive, converted a third down and 19 to Tyreek Hill. He then marched into the red zone, but Nolan Smith limited limited snaps in this game. How about his first career sack as an Eagle? And yes, I was sitting next to Josh Davis, Nolan Smith's biggest fan, and he went absolutely nuts. Now Smith only had four defensive snaps all night long, but he had two tackles, one TFL, one sack, one quarterback hit. Derek Barnett, on the other hand, played a lot more and did absolutely nothing. Do you guys agree with me that they should get rid of Derek Barnett and start playing Nolan Smith for more snaps? I've been saying he's not ready, but last night kind of told me he's ready to get at least more than four defensive snaps all game long, right? Unfortunately, the very next play, James Bradbury would fail to get his hands on Tyreek Hill at all, who, let's be real, made a Tyreek Hill-type play, ran right past the Eagles' double team for a 27-yard score, and suddenly it was a one-score game, 17-10 Philadelphia. Jalen Hurts again limping into the locker room at halftime, and the mood inside the link was getting a little bit concerned that the Eagles were going to start to kind of play bad in the third quarter. Miami would take the second half kick into Eagles' territory, but 10 penalties all night long, including more on this drive, would force a Finns punt. Also, you gotta give credit to the Eagles front four. They've been really the MVPs of the entire defense all season long, but last night, they were all over Raheem Mostert, and that number one rushing offense by the Miami Dolphins, it's gonna be very hard in January to run against this Eagle defense, especially in a playoff game, and I'd be very scared if I was an opposing offensive coordinator. Jalen and the company would go three and out, but then Tua couldn't convert on a fourth down and three, despite the fact that the refs probably missed a face mask call here on James Bradbury. But Dolphin fans couldn't complain long because the ball don't lie crowd was very excited when Hurts threw this really awkward pass that kind of took a right angle right into the Dolphins defenders for a pick six. I'm not sure this is totally on Jalen Hurts. He definitely should have thrown this ball away. At worst, it's an incomplete pass or a sack. Don't try and force it down the field. But the idea that, that the ball would get tipped and then just immediately immediately turn right, right into a Dolphin's waiting arms. It just kind of unlucky. While the fumble was really his fault early on, this first interception and the resulting pick six, you can't really blame Jalen all that much. Still though, Jalen, if we could not turn the football over at all during a game, you're going to be winning by a lot more than just 31-10. Now following the pick six, Jalen would immediately answer, show that tough and that grit, and go right down the football field where he'd scramble on this first down, which, back to the injury, he shouldn't be able to run here if it was a serious thing, right? But after the scramble, he then had another movement inside the pocket and a great move by Devontae Smith on one Eli Apple for another first down. We have to give Hurts credit, especially on this drive. There were multiple times where after turnovers, he could have just rolled over and had another bad game like he did against the Jets. But each time he turned the ball over, they marched right back down the field. This was probably Hurts' best overall game, and he was banged up, as we said earlier. 
Hurts then found A.J. Brown inside the red zone, broke some tackles, and did what A.J. Brown has done his entire career. But by the end of the night, A.J. Brown had his fifth straight 125-plus yard receiving night, another touchdown. No receiver has done that in the entire NFL since Megatron did it back in 2012. A.J. Brown is on a tear right now, and Nick Sirianni said in his post-game press conference, he's really glad Jeffrey Lurie paid him $100 million. But I think this week at practice, A.J. was having an unbelievable practice, and I went up to Mr. Lurie, and I go, I I'm like, there's no way I ever thought this would have came out of my mouth. Thanks for the $100 million to pay A.J. Brown. I really appreciate that. Like a guy from Jamestown, New York, I never thought I'd ever say, hey, thanks for the $100 million to pay A.J. Brown. Now, it's not a surprise A.J. Brown's elite. Like, we all know how great A.J. Brown is, but he's on a different level since that whole little drama on the sideline, Minnesota Vikings game. Each game after that, five in a row, he's probably been the best receiver in football. Tyreek's up there, but A.J. Brown right now is doing things that no other receiver is doing, and I'm just glad number 11's on our side. Atua then tried to answer, marched right back into the red zone, but in classic Ben but don't break fashion, the Eagles' defensive line created pressure, and Tua threw kind of a weird arm punt right into the waiting arms of big play Slay. Slay had a great night. The Eagles' secondary had a really good night, and I even told my fiance right before that pick that Slay's kind of been eh, on the downslope this year, but he obviously heard all the criticism, went at people on Twitter after the game, and he made a big game-changing play that got Philadelphia the ball back and got them rolling towards a win. I mean, Tyreek Hill had 11 catches, but he only had 88 yards. Waddle, 6 for 63. For a defense that was missing both of their starting safeties and obviously have had trouble covering people in the past, last night, what game was a masterclass by the defense and also Sean Desai. Now, Jalen and Brown would connect for four yards on third down and five, which was deep inside Eagle territory, so they ran the punting unit out. Then the whole crowd kind of convinced Sirianni to call timeout and line up for the brotherly shove because it's absolutely automatic and they obviously converted on it. Four plays later, they were in the same situation. Eagle side of the ball, fourth down and one, shoved it again and they got it again. So now those two conversions went from 13 minutes to go in the fourth quarter to like five minutes to go in the fourth quarter. So they chewed a bunch of clock but then A.J. Brown delivered the throw of the night. How about this one with a man in his face, double coverage, A.J. Brown! Oh my gosh, the link went absolutely insane on this play. Hey, come on, like, you can't defend this. This is going to give defensive coordinators nightmares because when Philadelphia needs a big play, A.J. Brown is right there. He's having such an incredible season right now, and that game last night, albeit against backups for the Miami secondary, was another statement that says, hey, I'm here, I'm an all-pro this year, and I might be a dark horse for MVP. Hurts then gave Gainwell a red zone carry, but it actually worked this time. He kept his feet up, spun in the end zone to basically go ahead and seal it. Dolphins had one final shot, but then Josh Sweat got a second sack of the night onto a tug of Iloa. And then on fourth down and 10, Tyreek Hill was blanketed by Eli Ricks. How about Nick Sirianni's reaction after this play as well? Side note on Eli Ricks, he was fantastic last night. 14 coverage snaps, all on Tyreek Hill. Zero catches. He had three targets. I mean, those numbers are insane for an undrafted free agent who wasn't even supposed to be on this roster at the beginning of training camp. Did they find another diamond in the rough here? I, I think they did. It's insane how good he was last night. Huge thumbs up for Eli Ricks. Philly would kneel it out, and boom, 31-17. A dominant win against a team that many people thought was the best offense in the National Football League. And I think there were a lot of doubters last night who were proved wrong that the Eagles, they can play with anybody, and they can overcome adversity, which it hurts injury, turnover, even some bad play calls. They were absolutely fantastic last night. And 6-1 and one is exactly where we hoped that they would be, but now that they're there... Boy, I'm feeling really, really good about this Eagles team. Now, I already broke down the Eagles' massive trade, but if you didn't see my live show earlier today, Philadelphia traded for Titan safety Kevin Byard, and they didn't give up a lot. <laughs> Look, a 2024 fifth-round draft pick, a 2024 sixth-round draft pick, and Terrell Edmonds. Appreciate your work, buddy, but sorry. See ya. Have fun on the Tennessee Titans. Now, Philadelphia gets an all happen right around Nick Sirianni's afternoon Monday press conference. Watch this reaction from Sirianni when he's told, hey, guess what? Did you know you just traded for Kevin Byard? The report just came out that the Eagles are trading for Kevin Byard. Is there any information you can help us with on that? <laughs> uh, yeah, not right now. Uh, let me, okay. yeah, you, you read it. Um, Clearly, he knew it was going to happen. It's funny to see the other Eagle young safeties. Not Justin Evans. He's not that young. But Evans, Blankenship, they've all been good and really, really good at times. But with all the injuries piling up, it was just perfect sense. It made perfect sense for Philadelphia to go ahead and make this move. Huge thumbs up for Kevin Byard. More info on that probably on tomorrow's show. But the fact that they got him 
fresh off of the season, he does it again. And we'll have plenty more coverage, especially updates on the situations with the injuries happening tomorrow. But quick shout out to all the people I met at the stadium yesterday. I think I ran into like 10 of you guys who recognize me, which it's always fun for me because it's fun to know that you guys love the show and watch it. But I love running into you guys. I appreciate you guys greatly. And I'm really, really glad we got to hang out at least for portions of that game. Oh, my fiance, she had an absolute blast at her very first Eagles game. She is definitely converting into a diehard Eagles fan. Again, plenty more stuff happening the next couple of days and weeks. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. Give me a go birds down in the comment section. Six and one. Let's go. I'm Thomas Ma. This was the Thomas Ma Show.